Sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Samuel, and I'm here with my colleagues Masayuki and Dongma, and we are here to share some of our experience as non-native English speakers in open source communities. So just to get started, let's give you a brief introduction of ourselves and share a little bit of our backgrounds. Hi, um, I'm Masayuki Igawa. Uh, I'm working for now SUSE, and uh, I'm now uh, concentrated to contribute to uh, OpenStack things, uh, especially OpenStack QA things. Uh, the, I'm uh, one of the core reviewer. One of the project is uh, Tempest core reviewer. And uh, I'm working at the Japan uh, Tokyo office. So I this is first time to visit Post Asia. I'm really happy, and uh, I really happy glad to uh, provide this presentation to you. Yeah. Yo, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dongma. Uh, I'm Chinese. Currently live in Beijing, China. I work for Holy Packer Enterprise as software engineer, uh, mainly focus on the open source stuff. Um, currently, mainly work on the open stack, open stack upstream contribution. Uh, I usually work for the for solid project as a con contributor. Um, I'm the second sec time joined the Force Asia. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Samuel de Medeiros Queiroz. I am Brazilian. I am working remotely for SUSE from Brazil, from a city called Natal. And I'm also involved in the OpenStack community. I am a Keystone Core reviewer. And it's also my first time here. So thanks for having us. So what does this talk about? Um, as I said, we are here to share some of our experience as non-native English speakers in open, open source communities. More specifically, in the OpenStack community, we have where we have been contributing for several years, and we are going to list to enumerate some challenges we have been facing in the community, and then how we have done to overcome those those challenges. And lastly, we are going to share with you some tips we have we find useful when onboarding newcomers in your respective communities. So the we are so Chinese and the Brazilian and the Japanese. So we will share our experience and the feeling and the thinking as a non-native English speakers, and we will share uh, challenges uh, based on the cultural side, and uh, it's based on uh, uh, our true stories. So. So from my side, uh, I am Japanese, and the uh, first one is not to say yes and no clearly. So many of Japanese tend to uh, avoid uh, to say yes or no clearly. So which means uh, we tend to express our opinion uh, unclearly. Uh, so we it is I think um, we we think it makes us respect each other. So for example, another example is that uh, we say in Japanese, zensho shimasu, zensho shimasu uh, in Japanese. So which means uh, I do my best in the dictionary, but uh, the actual meaning is I do nothing. So <laughs> in many cases, not every time, but in many cases. So this is used in a formal Conversations, so it's, it's very uh, bad things, I think. But uh, in uh, Japanese culture, it is not so problem because we know that. But uh, in uh, uh, international communications, uh, it's it is uh, really uh, bad. Uh, it is really bad. So we should really avoid to use like that things. So the second is uh, tend to be perfect. Uh, so Japanese are really trying to tend to be perfect. And uh, 
that is good, but uh, we will feel uh, scared about the, the mistakes things, uh, especially speaking or uh, listening. Uh, it's, if it is not perfect, we tend to avoid to, uh, to speak or listening. So it is re really bad to uh, conversation things. And the uh, third one is keep intonation. Yeah, so we Japanese tend to keep intonation in, in uh, conversations, uh, speak flat, and uh, it's very different behavior in uh, uh, normal English conversations. So I think it is, seems to like uh, Japanese people don't have uh, emotion, but uh, it is not. <laughs> So we have the emotion and the passion. So uh, I will, uh, I really uh, try to uh, show uh, up my uh, emotions. Yeah. And the uh, size of economy. So size of economy is uh, actually Japan's size of economy is uh, big. So we don't need to try to uh, have a conversation to uh, uh, international people, uh, foreign people. Uh, it is mm, really bad for our situation. Uh, I think we should uh, we should uh, take a conversation to other people's uh, international conversation. It's really uh, important for us. And uh, focusing on reading and writing the. Most of the school school uh, class is uh, focusing on reading and writing, so that is that is important. But uh, it is not uh, um, it is not perfect for uh, English conversation. We need to speak and listening to for conversation. So we need to uh, try to hard. Uh, exercise for that things, and uh, pronunciation and the grammar is really different from English and uh, between uh, English and the Japanese. So, for example, the pronouncing L and the R is uh, really difficult for me. Uh, so we don't we cannot distinguish the the two words. Uh, for example, the light, light, and the right, right hand is different, but uh, I'm not sure you can understand like this pronunciation. Yeah, this is really difficult. Yeah, there are some other like these things in other uh, language, I think. And uh, the other thing is uh, grammar. Grammar is completely different in uh, English and the Japanese. Uh, for example, uh, subject, verb, object is uh, the basic order in English. But uh, in Japanese, uh, subject, object, verb is a uh, basic uh, order. So uh, it's really complicated for me, uh, confused me. <laughs> yeah. So I need to uh, switch my brain to uh, English brain and the uh, Japanese brain. It's very confusing. And the last one from me is the uh, uh, katakana thing. Uh, the, we have the three type of characters in Japanese. Uh, that is uh, kanji and the hiragana and the katakana. So katakana is used for uh, imported words uh, like a network or file or comment like this. And but uh, this is we can understand the net the katakana is network. This is uh, similar uh, pronunciation, but uh, different actually. So we say network in Japanese network or file is file. Or uh, commento is uh, commento like this, so it's very confusing for me in English. And uh, the third one is uh, Japanese made English. So we have some uh, Japanese made English like a uh, pasacon and uh, aircon and uh, autobuy. That means a uh, uh, personal computer and uh, air conditioner and uh, 
motorbike is a motorbike, it's very uh, difficult, uh, different. And the uh, Pasakon, it's very confusing. And the Pasakon is not English, but uh, uh, most of the Japanese uh, believe that this is English. So it's very confusing things. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Um, OK. Um, I, I will share some uh, experience from the chi China culture. Um, and the Chinese culture also have some similar things like the Japanese culture. Uh, uh, I just will quick introduce one traditional culture called the Confucian culture, um, created by this man called Confused. Um, this culture is a uh, great influence the uh, Chinese ca character. Uh, this culture based on the tradition culture of the Xia Shangzhou uh, dynasty. It's about uh, 2000 years history. Um, and the whole Confucian text uh, is uh, uh, summarized by four books and uh, five classes. Uh, one of the book called the uh, Doctrine of the Mean. Uh, the Chinese name is Zhong Yong. Uh, one guideline of this book is, is Lenisi. Um, so this traditional culture um, will lead some behaviors uh, for Chinese people. For for example, Chinese people sometimes like to see yes but don't like to say no. Uh, uh, when we don't want to do something, we don't say no directly. Uh, we should say something others. That will be some misunderstanding. Um, also, we would like to listen, but don't like to uh, negotiate. Um, sometimes we don't like to fight. Mm. Um, uh, we also have some Chinese issues. First, is the Chinese pronunciation uh, is not understood by others. As uh, the local Chinese, uh, we have some pronunciation uh, come from the Chinese pinyin. Um, uh, I think it's some different with the English, so it's hard to understood by others sometimes. Um, also, uh, we didn't no, we didn't follow very well with the English grammar. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if we meet some friends, uh, uh, we will say hi, hello in English, but in Chai, Ch Chinese sometimes we will say 你吃了吗? which just mean do you eat? Uh, and uh, we also have some writing. Uh, issues. Uh, I think they similar with the uh, uh, the other non-native in English speaker. Uh, we can talk about it later. Okay. So now, from a Brazilian perspective, I have found that there is no like a huge difference between cultures in terms of speaking out. So um, like Japanese or Chinese, they may hesitate to speak. We don't have that. However, there are some, some differences that I would like to, to list here. And one that is very interesting is that sometimes American or British people may be very direct or um, short in response. And that may sound a little bit rude for us even if that's not the intent. Um, there are also some grammar um, particularities. For example, the vowel I in Portuguese is pronounced exactly the same way as the vowel E in English. So we just say E in Portuguese. And sometimes that may cause you to make mistakes when typing words. Or for example, listening to a music or something and trying to um, take notes. There is also the adjective posi position. So in English, the adjective com comes first, and then the noun. It's exactly the opposite in Portuguese. So we don't say 
like the beautiful house. We say the house beautiful, and that may also be um, confusing at the beginning. We also have that um, some phonemes don't exist in Portuguese. For example, the TH sound, and that's confusing. And you may find some Brazilian people um, replacing the TH sound sometimes by the F sound. For example, they may say thing instead of thing. And I also found that um, in Brazil, despite the fact you start learning English very early, you do not get to a very good level because the regular schools do a very poor job teaching English to, to kids. Okay, so now we have talked about the cultural aspects, the cultural challenges related to being a non-native English speaker. And then we are going to show you now a few points related to the language skills itself. We are going to um, we have split the content in the four skill sets of the languages. So we are going to address the reading, writing, listening, and then speaking. And we are going to start now with reading um, with Masayuki. Yep. So the reading part Reading is uh, the, yeah, luckily, re reading is the easiest part in most of the case, and, but it's very important because the most of the technology information is written in, oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> in, written in English, and uh, a synchronous conversation like an uh, email is in English uh, in uh, most of the uh, open source community. But luckily, we have the opportunity to read it again if we don't understand the uh, emails or something like that, uh, things. And uh, so we can use uh, a lot of uh, tools for that, uh, for example, uh, dictionary or uh, Google translation or something like that. It is very useful to to understand the uh, article or emails or something. And uh, but but uh, so IRC conversation goes fast. Yeah. So like a chat, in, uh, yeah, IRC or Slack or something is very often and very massive. Uh, so uh, I actually cannot follow it sometimes, and uh, I need to uh, use uh, Google Translation or some dictionary to understand that. And uh, sometimes, yeah, long emails conclusion is unclear. Uh, so there are sometimes very long emails, and uh, the the I read the finally. Um, what what's the conclusion mm, me, you know, something like this so uh, I need to spend a lot of time to read and understand that and so I think we should the email should be uh, more simple and uh, uh, easy to read we don't need to put uh, between the lines for the minutes <laughs> yep Okay, uh, I will share some challenges uh, for us with the writing. Um, first one is uh, the English grammar is a, an issue. Uh, as we say before, um, the structure of the sentence uh, is very different from different languages. Um, another challenge is write, writing long and beautiful sentence is very difficult for for the non-native English speaker, um, so the the simple sentences uh, are prevalent. Um, I think simple sentences uh, avoid misunderstanding, um, but sometimes uh, it is difficult to uh, to see the detail things. Uh, so uh, we should care about it. Um, also, sometimes the speed is also needed in the text chat, uh, like RC 
uh, handout, uh, Slack. Um, sometimes the speed is challenge for us. Uh, for example, if we uh, we chat on the RSC, the discussion is very fast. When I try to tap one sentence and uh, two page out, so yeah. Okay, next. Talking about listening, so we have addressed um, reading and writing, and listening is a little bit more challenging because when it comes to face-to-face -face conversation, you gotta give responses and understand that in real time. It's not like reading, as Masayuk said, you can read as many times as you, as you need. And in face-to-face -face conversation, it's not very good if you um, ask the person to repeat that, like, several times in the same conversation. So we have noted that it's harder than reading and writing, and there are some aspects of this, this skill that makes it a little bit tricky. And the first one is the variety of accents. For example, in the OpenStack community where we work, and in most of the communities, open source communities where you have like globally distributed teams, you get a large variety of accents. So when going to OpenStack events, for example, the OpenStack Summit, we get to talk to people from North America, from Australia, from um, Asia, and Brazil, and so on. And there are hundreds, maybe, of accents involved there. There is also the speed of conversation. That's natural because when two people who talk the same mother language get together, they use to talk quicker than uh, when you have a mix of people from different languages. And that, that they also makes it harder for us to understand. There's also the vocabulary, of course, because if people are using words that you cannot get during the real-time conversation, that may lead you to just misunderstood the conversation and be afraid of participating. There is also the grammar, of course. For example, Masayuki, the, the way the sentences are organized are completely different. And maybe he doesn't know that, but his brain needs to translate that to put the words in the right ways so that he can effectively understand what's being said. And lastly, to make it even um, more challenging, communication, face-to-face -face communication happens in noisy environments. So despite having all those um, challenging points, we also have the noise going on. So it's even harder to understand. Our last point is, our last skill set is speaking, and we got Masayuki. So the speaking part is more difficult, I think, than listening. So basically, uh, output something is more difficult than uh, input something. Especially, it speaking is requires the real time vocabulary and the grammar skills too. So, as I said before, the English words are and the English words and the pronunciation are very different from the uh, our uh, mother languages. So, and the speed and the frequency. Uh, speed is not if not uh, if sp speed is slow and the the frequency is very low. The conversation is really boring sometimes. So, and uh, if the speed and the frequency are low, uh, maybe native speakers are really boring sometimes. So it causes a very bad conversation. So we need to practice and uh, exercise the uh, speed and the frequency and uh, like these speaking skills. So the next part is the uh, overcoming obstacles. We have a lot of challenges, We, as we said, 
And, uh, but uh, we are now overcoming some of these things, not all. And uh, we would like to share the things and the tips for them. Uh, it would be uh, good for the conversation, fluent conversations. So, Vincent? Um, I will share some tips uh, for us to overcome the obstacles. Um, uh, first one, the, the culture challenges is harder uh, than the language challenges. And the culture difference uh, need to be respected. Um, and the English skills can be improved. Uh, and uh, second is the language immersion. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, you should be in contact with the English language uh, as much as you can. And try to forget your limitations. Uh, then do do the do your best, and you will eventually improve. Uh, also, uh, you need to read read as much as you can to gather more vocabulary and to improve your English skills. Yeah. Here we have a few more tips. And we have found that communicating daily is very important to brushing up your skills. So uh, always try to communicate maybe via messaging or trying to communicate to your colleagues in your um, office daily just to make sure you are um, making progress. There are also um, a lot of tools that can be useful out there. Masayuki mentioned that you may use Google Translator, you may use online dictionaries as well, and they help a lot, especially when, it, when you have the time to do that, when reading and writing um, emails. Try to pr practice with yourself and with others. So one thing that's very um, interesting, at least for me, is that practicing to yourself works. I was called some, some, sometimes when I was first learning English and French, I was talking to myself and people around me um, might be thinking I was crazy, but that's very useful because um, one thing is when you may form, you may make the subject and the ideas inside your head and other things when you try to put the words out. And the last point is trying to set up one-to-one -one conversations with a friend or someone who does speak the language you are trying to learn. Because if you talk to a single person, it's very easy to get comfortable and if you are afraid to make mistakes in our in a large audience, that, that's much easier when talking to a single person. And lastly, we are going to share with you a few tips that may be useful when onboarding newcomers in your respective communities. Sayuki. So, I... This is uh, newcomers for newcomers, but uh, I think this is useful for all newcomers. Uh, that means uh, not only for non-native speakers newcomers, but also uh, native speakers newcomers. I mean that. And, uh, but especially important to uh, non-native speakers, sorry. Yeah, speakers. Yeah. So first one is be friendly. So be open your mind, and most of the people, uh, especially open source communities people, are uh, very open mind, have a very open mind. So you can find uh, friends or mentors uh, if you are friendly. But if you're not friendly, <laughs> you cannot get uh, friends or something like that. So if the friends or mentors are really good at uh, English, uh, it's really lucky and uh, for your English skill. So you can exercise your English skill with uh, through uh, communicate with the friends. It's really good. And uh, find a mentor. Yeah, mentors can give you uh, about 
technical things and also uh, maybe communication things it's also important and uh, share your opinion if you don't share your opinion people don't understand your opinion so it is very important and uh, sharing your opinion uh, through uh, using a, a conversation skill in English conversation skill it would be a good training to for English communication and uh, prepare in advance so preparation is preferable uh, it's needed and uh, so this is like these sessions we are actually exercise uh, for these sessions I'm not sure this is uh, good or not <laughs> so I hope this is good for you and uh, so the ask questions so you should ask questions in English that is really good to exercise one of the really good to exercise for English so this is I don't think uh, you don't need to think about uh, really special fantastic uh, questions uh, it should be a simple question is really good for that uh, for example uh, uh, number two slide is not un it's unclear for me so please uh, say that, explain that again it, this is really good question I think so it's it should be simple yeah simple is good and the brush up up your English skill this is also needed for us especially for me so uh, yeah uh, we don't have enough English skill right now but uh, we can brush up for that it uh, leads a really good conversation uh, really good communication with other people in uh, open source communities Okay, uh, we, we will share some tips for the native uh, English speaker. Uh, first one uh, should be patient. And so uh, each of English, uh, so, so each of the non-native English uh, le speaker levels is very different. Uh, sometimes you feel f frustration on a conversation with them. Uh, uh, due to the pronunciation or grammar vocabulary uh, so um, please be patient uh, for them um, also uh, please uh, speak uh, slowly uh, especially in a group dis discussions the very heat up speed up and uh, discussions will uh, let the let the, the non-native English speaker hard to understand. Um, so the next is to try to use the simple words and the simple ten sentence as you can to avoid the misunderstanding. Um, next one to encourage the communication and to make them comfortable uh, enough to talk up. And the last one and the important one is please don't make fun of the, the yeah that's all our sessions thank you does anybody have questions So I want to know the what is the uh, what is the most important important things to uh, communication to each other and uh, the, the question two is what is the uh, most pay attention pay attention pay attention to when you uh, communicate uh, with each other. So there were two questions. The first one was, what are the most important things when communicating? And the question two, what are the things you need to pay attention to more, the most? 
So, yeah, good question. <laughs> so, first question is most important things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, in my opinion, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> uh, I think this is, uh, I'm, Mm, every time I think I think uh, the 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 others what the uh, the others what thinking uh, I respect I respect sorry I respect others that is uh, really important the it's, uh, last word is um, don't make fun things yeah that is really important if to make fun something and some others it's really bad uh, relation so uh, respect each other is really good uh, really important for me I think so cool I agree with him so basically I think the native speakers need to be patient to respect to not make fun because um, we are trying to make an effort because we could basically just be working on projects that are um, like communicated in our native languages and we wouldn't be having like any, any issue like we are having here. So we need to be respected and we need to feel comfortable to be speaking like to an audience, to be speaking to other folks. So we need to feel confident and to, to feel comfortable. And if, if people, if you feel that like you are being disrespected, you won't feel comfortable, of course. And the next question was about the things you need to pay attention. So it really depends on what you are talking about, but you need to, as in any conversation, you just need to, to know what you are talking about. So ask good questions, um, share your, your opinion, as you said. Um, so things like that, nothing really specific. Not sure if you had anything else in mind. Do you have more questions? Sorry, but we need to... Okay, so we run out of time. Thank you very much for having us.